In this video, we provide the solution to question number 15 for practice exam 2 for math 1210. We're asked to compute the limit as x approaches 1 of x cubed minus 1 over x squared minus 1. Now, the tempting thing to do is just to plug in x equals 1 and you get 1 cubed minus 1 over 1 squared minus 1. That's equal to, well, 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1, which gives a 0 over 0. That's an indeterminate form, so that's not going to give us uh, the limit. That just tells us we got to do something else. It does tell us, though, that since we got zero on top and bottom, there's some common factor to the top and bottom, which is necessarily going to be x minus one. Uh, the only way that the top can be zero is because the top's factorable by x minus one. Same thing with the denominator as well. So we're going to have to factor these things uh, to cons we're going to have to factor these things in order to compute the limit. Try to simplify it here. Take the take the limit as x approaches one of x cubed minus one. Um, x squared minus 1. So many of us will probably see how to factor the denominator. As it's a difference of squares, uh, we can factor it as x minus 1 and x plus 1. So we can see that factor right there. The numerator can also be factored. This one is a little bit less known, um, but it still is a very special factorization. It's worth putting on a note card, I would say. You know, you should study this one. The, the difference of cubes factorization. So we're, we're familiar that a squared minus b squared can factor as a minus b and a plus b. But some other factorizations worth remembering, if you have a cubed minus b cubed, the difference of cubes, this factors as a minus b, and you get a squared plus a b plus b squared. Uh, so the way I like to think of it is if you have the difference of cubes, well, one of the factors is a difference, but it's like you forgot the cube. Yikes, I forgot to bring the ice cubes to the party, guys. I forgot them. Um, and then the other one is a squared plus a b plus b squared, for which, um, if you multiply out, you see why this thing works, but you can kind of compare this to like the perfect squared trinomial. If you have a plus b squared, this multiplies out as a squared plus 2ab plus b squared right here. Um, or, right, and so you see like there's the 2 that's missing in this factorization. So the first factor is you forgot the cubes. On the second factor, you forgot the 2. And so in order to remember the difference of cubes, you need to forget, right? To remember the formula, forget the cubes, forget the 2. And that also applies if you want to do the sum of cubes. Um, there's not a sum There's not a sum of squares formula because that would involve imaginary coefficients. Uh, but for cubes, you can get away with it. If you take a cubed plus b cubed, the factor as a plus b. You forgot the cubes. Uh, and then you get a squared minus a b plus b squared. Uh, which looks like the perfect squared trinomial factorization a minus b squared, which would look like a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, but you forgot the two. So the same thing, forget the cubes, forget the two, that's how you remember. Um, the other thing to remember is that this negative sign will be the same here, but you'll see an opposite sign there. Instead, you have a plus here, plus here, you get a minus there. So these are some special factorizations. If you don't remember them, maybe put them on a note card. It could be help us, would be very helpful in this situation. Because if you take x cubed minus 1 with this factorization in mind, uh, specifically this one, you'll get x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1. So with that factorization in mind, you can simplify this thing very effectively like so. Um, and so now you see that as x goes to 1, these other things don't have any problems. You don't have the 0 over 0 anymore. You have x squared plus x plus 1 over x plus 1 as x approaches 1. So now we can plus just plug in x equals 1. We get 1 squared plus 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1, which will end up giving us 3 over 2, which is the correct limit of this value. Now, before ending this video, I did want to make mention to you that if by some horrible chance you forgot this formula, but you need a factor, it's like, oh, yikes, x cubed minus 1. I don't know how to factor it. Well, factoring is just dividing, right? Um, if you're trying to factor this thing, you can just divide it instead. And like I told you, the reason why you got 0 over 0 when you take the limit as x goes to 1, it's because x minus 1 is a factor. And so let's factor, let's divide x cubed minus 1 by x minus 1. Again, it's it's not the most ideal way to do it, but if you're in some type of desert island calculus scenario, um, it's better than not being able to solve the problem. So x goes into x cubed x squared times. That is just to say, just take x cubed divided by x, you get x squared. Um, so then you're, you're going to take x minus 1 times it by x squared. You're going to get x cubed minus x squared. You're going to subtract it from above. The x cubes cancel. 
And then you have a double negative, right? You're, you're taking a negative, negative x squared. So you get a negative x squared, bring down the negative one. You rinse and repeat. X goes into x squared x many times, for which, again, where that x come from, it just took x squared divided by x. You get an x right there. Then we're going to take x times x minus one here. That gives us x squared minus x subtracted from above. Again, the x squareds will cancel. And then you're going to get a negative negative x. So you get negative my. Uh, negative negative x is positive x minus 1 and then x minus 1 goes in x minus 1 exactly one time and the remainder there is actually going to be 0 so you get 0 um, and so there we go we get the quotient right here and so that's long division of polynomials you can use it if you have to to factor but turns out even easier than that is if you remember how synthetic division works since we know again the limit we're taking the limit as x approaches 1 right here we know that since we're approaching 1 our polynomial, we have to divide by one. That's what we're doing here. And with synthetic division, you typically just write the coefficients here. So one x cubed, zero x squared, zero x minus one. You can do synthetic division, bring down the one. One times one is one, plus zero is one, times one is one, plus zero is one, times one is one, minus, zero, minus one is zero. In which case then we see these are the coefficients of the quotient x squared plus x plus 1. So I don't want you to get in a situation where you feel like you're stuck because you don't remember one of these special factorizations because there are solutions to do to, to get around this. One, write down the special factorizations either in your brain or on a note card that you can use on a test. And if perchance you don't have them but you need to factor, factor is just dividing. If you get 0 over 0, which is very probable for question number 15, that means there's a common factor in these situations. And so factor using division if you have to. Now, these are techniques that are going to work if you have a rational function. We had x cubed minus 1 over x squared minus 1. If you have something a little bit more convoluted, if there's like fractions involved, you might have to clear the denominators. If there's square roots involved, you might have to rationalize by multiplying by conjugates. If you combine these algebraic techniques, then you should be able to calculate this limit.